Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to David United Methodist Church. We are blessed and excited you're here with us on this fourth Sunday of Advent, this beautiful Sunday morning. Let us start with a few announcements. So you see the beautiful poinsettias are here. If you still want to purchase a poinsettia and put it in, in the name of a loved one, contact the office on Tuesday and we'll take care of you. Also, we are obviously here in the home stretch. Christmas Eve is this Thursday, and we have three services, 7, 9, and 11. Wesley, you want to tell us what's going on? Absolutely. I have I no clue what's happening. You, we've, got, we've got a few things happening on Christmas Eve, and uh, as Pastor just said, three services, 7 p.m., 9 p.m., and 11 p.m., and we have some wonderful guests coming in for this service. Uh, first of all, we have Kimberly Hinton, a wonderful soprano, and I think you're really going to enjoy her music. And also, Carolyn Smiley is going to be here. Carolyn is the principal soloist at the First Presbyterian Church in Hollywood. We stole her away for the night, so uh, she's going to be here. And also, we have a Romanian tenor, a young man who is just the nicest man you're ever going to want to meet. Ra uh, Marcel Rasa is going to be here. And then our old friend David Sism will be back, and he always brings a lot of joy and happiness when he comes to sing. And so we hope that you will be here for one of those services and uh, just in, in join with us as we celebrate Christmas Eve. Amen. It's going to be a wonderful night, and I know Wesley worked very hard getting it together, and we look forward to seeing you all here. 7, 9, 11, we're doing that to make sure that we have plenty of room. Normally, we would just have two worship services but on this Christmas Eve, we're going to add the 9 o'clock service so that we can social distance. We'll have everything that we do here on the Sunday morning worship. We'll check your temperature, make sure you wear your mask, all the things that the CDC recommends that we do to keep everybody safe in this Christmas season. We have the, the card boxes, the Christmas card boxes up. It's in the back, so if you have cards to give anyone, you can put those in there. Christmas Eve, make sure you pick those up in the next few weeks. We also have the envelope boxes for your tithes, gifts, and offerings. Those are in the back as well. Ask the ushers on your way out if you didn't get them when you came in. My family also is giving each family unit a Christmas card, so those are in the back as well. Just ask the usher and they'll make sure that you get those. This year coming up, this new year, 2021, amen, we're gonna make it. I know, I know we, didn't, we weren't sure we we're gonna make it, but we're gonna make it. We are going to be restarting our small group Sunday school class and then our small group Wednesday Bible study, Wednesday night Bible study. So just be on the lookout. We'll be putting that information out in January, letting everybody know. It's going to be in both format, a live format and an online format. So just be aware we're going to be putting that information out. and We would love for you to join us in those small group Bible studies. So let us start Advent, the fourth Sunday of Advent, by lighting the Advent candle. We have the Gomez family that's going to come up. Last Sunday, we lit the pink candle of joy. We light it and the purple candles of hope and peace again as we remember that Christ, who was born in Bethlehem, will come again to fulfill all of God's promises and bring us everlasting peace and joy. The fourth candle of Advent is the candle of love. God's love is a perfect love. It holds nothing back. God in love gives us everything we need to live a life of hope, peace, and joy. The Bible says that God so loved the world, he gave his only son, so that whoever believes in him will not perish, but have everlasting life. Jesus shows us God's perfect love. This is what love is like. 
Love is patient and kind. Love is never boastful or conceited, rude or selfish. Love is not quick to take offense. It keeps no records of wrongs. It does not gloat over other people's troubles, but rejoices whenever truth wins out. Love never gives up. Love never loses faith, is always hopeful, and endures through every circumstance. Love never ends. The light of the third purple candle of love to remind us that Jesus brings us God's love and shows us how to love others. Let us pray. Love is like a light shining in a dark place. As we look at this candle, we celebrate the love we find in Jesus Christ. Thank you, God, for the love you give us. Amen. Thank you. 
Please stand, if you're able, for the reading of the word of God. Luke, chapter 1, verses 46 through 55. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the loneliness of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. His mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the thoughts of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful of their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy, according to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Please be seated. Sweetly singing o'er the plain And the mountains in reply Rackle back their joyous ray Oh, oh, In excelsis Deo Commodore on bend and knee, Christ the Lord, the newborn King. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Within a manger laid, Jesus, Lord of heaven and earth, Mary, Joseph, lend your aid with the sing of Savior's birth. Gloria, in excelsis Deo. for the reading of the word of God. Romans 
chapter 16, verses 25 through 27. Now to God, who is able to strengthen you according to my gospel and the proclamation of Jesus Christ, according to the revelation of the mystery that was kept secret for long ages, but is now disclosed and through the prophetic writings is made known to all the Gentiles, according to the command of the eternal God to bring about the obedience of faith. To the only wise God, through Jesus Christ, to whom be the glory forever. Amen. May the Lord bless this reading of his holy word. Please be seated. So first we want to, as we go into our time of prayer, before we get into that, I first want to recognize, and I forgot to do this at the 9 o'clock service, but I would ask Stephen Bauer to stand up. He's in the back. So everyone say hi to Stephen. So if you've been around, you probably have seen Stephen running around helping. Stand back up. You don't get off that easy. (laughs) He, He tried so hard not to do this, so... So Stephen's been helping out a lot around the church. He first came to us to get service hours, and those service hours quickly ran out, and he kept coming back. And so after a while, we thought, well, we got to do something. we got to give him a title. He keeps being around here. So he is the official intern for the church, ministry intern for the church, and we voted on that at the church council this past week. So everyone give him a little praise offering. He has, he has been so helpful. I can't even tell you how much stuff we've gotten done because of Stephen being here. And he helps Rob out a lot. And he also comes and talks to me about theology a lot and asks very difficult questions. And we have long conversations. So we are actually going to make him... This summer, we're in the process of getting him approved to be a paid intern this summer for, I think, a month and a half. So he will actually be paid staff, and the Florida Conference is going to help with that. It's going to be a joint paid position through the Florida Conference and Davy UMC. So we look forward to getting that approved, and we, we have lots of high hopes for Stephen. He's a wonderful Gentlemen, he just graduated from college, and we just really look forward to the rest of the year and the summer working and serving. You can sit down now, Stephen. I know you're trying. (laughs) And we also want to keep in prayer Walter, who is, um, he's at the hospital right now, or he's in the, getting some tests? Absolutely. So Walter is the bass player, but he's not here today because of those issues. So let's keep him and his family in our prayers as well. Let us also pray for St. John's United Methodist Church each week. We pray for other churches in our community. This week we're praying for St. John's in Fort Lauderdale and Pastor Pierre Exantus. Pastor Pierre asked us to pray for him. He's the new pastor there. And to continue to pray for the safety and health of their congregation and for their five-fold ministries and everything that they got going on over there at St. John's. If you remember, that was where Pastor Simon Osolana was the pastor, and he's a dear friend. So let us keep them in prayer this week. Let us go to God in prayer. God of Advent, God of waiting and watching, We have come to you this day with hearts heavy, heavy with the concerns for family, for friends, for our nation and the world, heavy with concerns for the struggles in our homes, in our community, in the lives 
of our loved ones and friends. We feel powerless to affect any changes. So we withdraw into ourselves. We are quick to criticize and slow to change our own behavior. Today you have called us to prepare ourselves to receive this shoot which shall arise from the stump of Jesse. You remind us that this is the one who will bring messages of peace and hope. He will help us to become faithful disciples and servants. But we have much to change. We ask you to help us to prepare for the needs to focus on our own attitudes and actions. We need your help to clean out our spiritual houses of the cobwebs of hate, greed, apathy, and suspicion. We need your help to focus more on your absolute love and forgiveness as we turn our lives to you offering names and situations in prayers for healing mercies. Help us to remember that our own healing is vital. Enable us to be strong and confident as you call us into service for this world, for this community, for your people. We ask all of this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, as we pray together the prayer that he taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, there's certain things that you struggle with in the Christian walk, and one of them for me was what has God called me to? And I drove my wife crazy over the years with this subject, over 40 years of Christian service. And finally, the Father showed me in his word, don't worry about that. There are two things that is common to all the born again believers in the body of Christ as far as our call. Number one is we're called to be sons, this is sons and daughters of God. This means that our relationship with the heavenly Father I'd like to read a verse uh, regarding that. It's in uh, 1 John 3, 2, and it says, Beloved, now are we the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. So, beloved, now are we the sons of God. And, of course, when the Bible refers to sons of God, it's gender neutral. God is politically correct. It means inclusive to anybody who is saved anybody's born again they are a son or a daughter of god don't want to offend anybody and the second thing that he has called us to not only sons and daughters of god but he's called us to be ambassadors ambassadors for christ and this is our service calling you have your sonship calling in relationship with him that you want to keep vital and then you have your service calling as ambassadors for christ and the first uh, the verse for that is 2 Corinthians 5.20. It says, now then we are ambassadors for Christ. So every son of God, every daughter of God in the body of Christ is also an ambassador for Christ. So the two things we want to hold in mind as far as what God called me to, every one of us can say we are sons and daughters of God and we are ambassadors for Christ. This song is on the service end of those two things. It's called Jesus Christ our Lord. Two, three, four. To 
Does everybody know it? Has everybody heard what he has done? No one earth deserved it. Still he gave his life for everyone. There's no way to earn it. The gift is ours by grace and grace alone. The Son of God secured it. Believe on him, confess him as your Lord. Our Lord, our Lord, Jesus Christ the Lord. Our Lord, our Lord. No one else could take his place. No one else could make the grade. No one else but Jesus Christ the Lord. He was sent from God above to make oh what fallen man messed up. Jesus Christ the Lord. He took our place, stepped in with his love and grace, saved us forevermore. Jesus Christ the Lord, our Lord, our Lord. Jesus Christ the Lord, our Lord, our Lord. He took our place, stepped in with his love and grace, saved us forevermore. Jesus Christ the Lord, our Lord, our Lord. Jesus Christ the Lord, our Lord, our Lord. Jesus Christ the Lord. Please stand as you are able for the reading of the words of God. This is from the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, starting at verse 26. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee called Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph of the house of David. The virgin name was Mary, and he came to her and said, Greetings, favored one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favor with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High, and the Lord God will give to him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the ch child to be born will be holy. He will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her, who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I. The servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. These are the words of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You may be seated. Heavenly Father, send down your Holy Spirit and fill us 
with your spirit. Transform us, change us, change our hearts. Bring us closer to you in Jesus Christ's image. Change me. Allow me to get out of your way. Make these words your words, this sermon your sermon. In Jesus Christ's name, amen. So this video is one of the videos that we've been watching at the preschool chapel that we have each week as we've been moving into through Advent and the children have been prepared, but they have been getting prepared for Christmas. They've been ready the whole time, but they love these type of videos. They're very beautiful and sweet. Maybe not exactly the way it went down, but definitely <laughs> a nice way to look at it, especially through a child's eyes. As we are going through Advent in this week, this week as we talk about this word love, and we read these scriptures about Mary and what it must have been like for her as she tries to live through this really crazy moment. We remember that we don't deify Mary. We don't pray or pray towards her. She is not God. She is not Jesus. But she is very important. She is actually both at the birth of Jesus Christ, the Christmas moment, and also at Jesus' death, and probably throughout his entire life. 
this woman and also this, this woman, Elizabeth, who's in this first chapter of Luke, who is the mother of John the Baptist, are called in these moments to be part of God's story for the transformation of the world. And I find it very interesting, her reaction, both in scripture and that video. And I love her reaction in the video because she's looking at Gabriel, the angel, with this look of just, what are you talking about? This is impossible. I'm a virgin. I'm too young for this. I'm a teenager. What am I supposed to be doing? Mary was very young. We believe she was anywhere from 12 to 14 years old. Now, for us in our culture, that's extremely young. But in their culture at that time, that's when people really came together and got married and started having children at a very young age. But even if it was culturally appropriate, she was not ready. She thought this was going to be impossible. This is a call story for Mary. God is putting a call into her life that she cannot understand, and she questions. Scripture, the Old Testament and the New Testament, is filled with these call stories. And they tend to be these calls from God, calls that seem like they cannot happen, that either the person isn't good enough, that it's in a possible situation, that they're never going to be able to do what God is calling them to do. And as Jesse was talking about before his song, that this is something many of us struggle with. The children of God, the sons and daughters of God, we are called into these these lives that seem very difficult and in many times something that we're not able to accomplish, that we're not going to be able to live into. And so it becomes very normal for people to reject God's call, to say, I can't do this. I'm not good enough. But the truth is, is that God doesn't call people that are good enough. Because if God did that, if Mary was just a normal person that was already married, that wasn't a virgin, then this wouldn't be a miracle. This is an impossible situation that there is no way Mary could do on her own. She knows this. She questions God. She questions the angel. How can this be? But her response after the questioning is beautiful. And we see it both in the scripture I just read and the other Luke scripture that Diane read earlier in the service. They are actually both from Luke 1. The scripture she read is actually a little bit later on. And it's called Mary's Magnificat. It's where Mary praises the majesty of God through song. And she does this after she goes and visits her cousin, Elizabeth, who is also doing something that she thought was impossible, which is having a child when she was much older. She thought she was barren, and she was past the time that she could have conceived. And so both of these beautiful women of God are following and doing God's call for them in their life, even though it was impossible for them to do it on their own, they are praising God through the moment. That scripture Diane read is actually a song of praise. It is a beautiful testament of the beauty and power of God. In this scripture at the end, in verse 38, it says, Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord, let it be with me according to your word. It was impossible. This moment is a moment that should never have happened, but she was obedient and faithful even in the impossibility of the moment. 
She didn't walk away and say, this can't happen. I'm not going to do it. She said, here I am. This obedience is probably why she was chosen. Out of all the people that God chose to be the mother of the Son of God, God chose Mary because Mary was obedient, even in the face of this. And so this is an answer, I believe, to how we are called to love in this season, in this year, in our lives. As we look at humanly love versus the love of God, many of us say, I'm not good enough to love the way that you are calling me to love my neighbor that you are calling me to love you with all of my heart, with all of my soul, with everything I've got. And the truth is, you're right. You don't have the right kind of love to love the way that God is calling us to love. It is impossible for each of us, for all of us, to love in the way that God has called us to love. Because most of us want to love the people that look like us, that act like us, that smell like us. It's hard to love someone who is dirty, who doesn't have the right kind of clothes on, who doesn't drive the right kind of car, who doesn't live in the right house that maybe doesn't even live in a house. That's impossible for us, but it's not impossible for God. We are called to love our neighbor with an impossible love that we cannot do on our own. And when we do it, when we do it through the love of God, through the power of God, God is glorified. If we do it through our own love, if we do it through our own power, if Mary did it through her ability, if Elizabeth did her calling through her ability, no one would notice. And we wouldn't be talking about it today. But because they did the impossible with the power and love of God, it not just change their lives, it changed the world because God was glorified through it. That's the beauty of Mary's song, singing of the majesty of God, because she knew something. She knew that all of it was done through God's love and that God was glorified in that moment. And that's what we're being called into today in this moment, in this season, in this year. But really all of the days of our life is to love with God's love. To love with a love that transforms not just ourselves but the entire world. And we're seeing that in this church We're seeing that in the moment where we sent over $1,000 of gift cards to the Florida Children's Home. We saw it when we fed over 85 families for Thanksgiving. I've seen it in an outpouring of cards, gift cards, over and above what we sent to the Children's Home so much so that we have given this church through donations of individuals and families over $1,300 worth of gift cards for families in this community that were unable to buy presents for their children. That kind of love is transformational. I know because I saw it on their faces with the tears running down their cheeks as they received those cards, knowing they would be able to buy something for their, for their child that they desperately were wishing and asking for. That is the love that's impossible. 
That is the love that only God could place in our hearts. Many people are focused on what they're getting out of this Christmas. And I believe this church is looking at how they can help those people that are different than them. How they can have a beautiful moment. And maybe, just maybe, they'll come into a life-changing relationship with God through it. Amen? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we love you, God. We love you and we praise you. You are an awesome God. We thank you for all of the blessings you pour out into our lives. And we ask you to give us the strength and courage to be a blessing to others in this season. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go tell it on the mountain. That Jesus Christ is born. While shepherds kept their watching, or silent flocks by night, behold, throughout the heavens there shone a holy light. Go tell it on the mountain, over the hills and everywhere. Go. Tell it on the mountain that Jesus Christ is born. Down in a lovely manger, the humble Christ was born and brought on God's salvation that blessed Christmas morn. Go tell it on the mountain. Over the hills and everywhere Go tell it on the mountain That Jesus Christ is born That Jesus Christ is born Jesus Christ is born So as we go forth First, I would just like to mention that the Annan family is, is back in the back on the right side. We had a beautiful funeral service and graveside service for Big Jim, who passed away. And if you get a chance, obviously be careful with social distancing and everything if you weren't able to. Um, keep them in your prayers, of course, and, and their family as they go through this time of loss. It was, it was a beautiful service, and I know Big Jim would have been looking down and smiling, and he's a beautiful man. So keep them in your prayers. As you leave, there are plates at each exit. The ushers are going to direct you out so we don't clump up at the exits. The plates are for your tithes, gifts, and offering. If you are watching on the Internet, you can go to DavyUMC.com, and about halfway down, there's an orange giving button for your tithes, gifts, and offerings, and we thank you for that. May the hope of God fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in love by the power of the Holy Spirit. God bless you. Amen.